Hi guys, Ferenc here from Remek. Beautiful Sunday, and we're going to do a little research here. So if you recall, we have had a couple of videos about backtesting, and we want to verify the edge of the standalones, or algorithmic trading solutions. So backtesting is step one. It's a long process, and today we're going to move forward a little bit and talk about and do a little work in optimization. It's still not the final answer. Libraries have been filled about backtesting, so the whole scope goes beyond what we can do in this one video. But here's just a little introduction, and if you're interested in this work, which you should be, then here's a little video to get you started. So here we are in Ninja, and what we're going to do is we're going to open up the strategy analyzer. Here we go. Beautiful. And we're going to run some tests here. So in this case, we have done videos on backtesting already. Let's do something further up the path here towards edge verification, and that's optimization. Optimization is a two-edged sword because overdoing it can lead down a rabbit hole where we don't want to go and will not bring the results that we think it will. So we have to be very cautious and not to over-optimize so in this exercise, I'm just going to optimize it for two or three settings maximum and just to see what we get. And just to say this right up front, this will not be a proof of anything, of course. The future is unknown. There's no way to know the future. What we can do and the best we can do is to gather evidence to support a claim. And that's very different from a proof. Proof is 100% evidence is evidence is a strong indication. So we are now gathering evidence to support a potential claim that this strategy, deploying this strategy on the market, makes sense and could be profitable. So this is what we're doing. Let's do it. Okay, so here we are in the strategy analyzer. And I'm going to choose our flagship Remec product, BT. Please note, BT and BTX are almost 99% of the same. There are slight differences. One of the differences is, as far as backtesting or optimization is concerned, that when you run it in the backtest, it's possible with BTX, it's possible to specify if you just want to run or test for or enter long trades only or short trades only or both. BT, you have to take both. So where are the situations where in a trader's life where you, may, you might say that I'm only interested in taking long trades? Well, obviously one area could be when you trade stocks. Many, many traders, they never short stocks and with good reason. And if that's a test that you want to perform, then you might want to use BTX, in which case you can filter out any short trades that you would do, that you would otherwise be entered into. Now, in this case, we're not going to do that. We're going to be on futures contracts. I'll show you in a second. And we want to take all the trades. All right? So that's what BT is for. We're going to take longs and we're going to take shorts and we'll see what happens. What instruments do we want to run the test on? I have prepared here four instruments and that, those are the U.S. futures contracts here. And I'm going to run this test on four instruments. Now, optimization. Okay, what do we want to optimize on? I want to optimize on minutes. What I want to do is, so what is, what is, what's the question here? The question I'm asking here from NinjaTrader is that between five minutes and 30 minutes, what would be the best time frame to run this program, to run this algorithmic trading strategy in five minute increments. So this means that Ninja will test for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20, 25, and 30, and nothing in between. So five minute increments between five and 30 minutes. Now I know that you could test it on every minute or whatever, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to run this test for half an hour. I want to make it reasonably fast and, uh, 
again, if you want to run, run it on every minute, that you're running the danger of over-optimization. So five minutes is good. Remember what we want. We want a robust system. What we want is we don't want a system that we don't want a car that only runs in August and breaks down in December. No, we want a car, less flashy car, but that we can rely on every day. We want the same thing in a trading strategy. We want robustness. And robustness in our job means that it is reasonably well performing, whatever the market regime. That's what we want. We don't, we don't want to optimize it to certain circumstances. So I hope that makes sense. So I think five minute increments is a good rough guide to start with. All right. And next, oh, by the way, let me show you something. There's a little trick here. You have to scroll down and make sure that the optimized data series switch is switched on. If I switch this off, then I will not be able to optimize on the minutes. Check this out. You see, then you have to enter the minutes manually. There's no optimization option. So if you ever run into this, please remember, you want to optimize on time frames, tick, volume, whatever. I just do minutes. Then scroll down first, activate the data series optimization option. I don't know why Ninja put it down here. Maybe these two fields should be next to each other. But anyway, here it is, optimize data series. Switch it on. Then you scroll back up. Here we go. And now you can enter those details. And I'm just going to stick to what we have discussed, okay? So from 5 to 30 in five-minute increments. Good. Next is look-back period. Of course, you could uh, test it on a very long look-back period, even a decade or more. But again, just to keep it reasonable, I'm going to test it on two and a half years. All right, that's a lot of trades on a small chart like this for instruments. So what we want is a large database, a large sample size, so that the meaning, the, the results will be statistically meaningful, hopefully. All right, so two and a half year look back period. All right, let's go down. And again, I could optimize this to death, but I don't want to do that because then first, the test will run too, too long. Second, it will not necessarily be any more helpful than a robust test. But I got to tell you, there's a couple of things that are important for me. So this is what we're going to do here. Two contracts, as always. Two contracts. One, just one contract, the first order set, and one contract in the second order set. So far, so good. Profit target? Yes. I. Um, so there are two contracts. I want to know what's best for us. Where should the first target be, you see? And again, I don't want to over-optimize and, uh, and enter to like a large span of values. So I'm going to ask Ninja this question. What's the best setting, one ATR, two ATRs, or three ATRs? What's the best? So between one and three in one ATR increments. That's what I'm asking which profit target should I be using for the first contract? Stop loss, I don't want to fiddle with it. Three ATR stop is just fine for me. That's just about the other side of the Keltner, so that's perfect. Let's look at the second order set here. Contract size is one. Initial stop is three for both contracts. I'm not going to change that. Now, trigger level is important. So the question is, when shall I start to trail the second contract. When? I want to, I want to test it out. When shall I start it? Between one and three ATRs in one ATR increments, Ninja will tell us the answer. And the second, one more thing I'm going to uh, optimize here or look for an answer. I'm going to ask one more question from Ninja. I'm going to ask, when I start trailing, how far should my trading stop start out with? Okay, one ATR distance, two or three ATRs, and then I will tighten it because the parabolic trailing stop will be true. I will gradually tighten it. And I don't want to fiddle with the other settings that further test, and I'm not going to restrict the time, so I'm going to take all the trades 24-7. In real life, probably I wouldn't do that. Like if you're an intraday trader, 4 p.m. Eastern time market just about to close, 3.58, would you enter a trade? Not really, I wouldn't. There's no time to finish the trade intraday. But, um, but in this case, 
I'm just going to leave it 24 seven. So there might be some trades which are taken the last minute, but so this test will include the good, the bad, and the ugly as well. All right. So here we go. Just a rough test. And I'm not going to fiddle with any other settings. It's just a default setting that the program starts with and the settings that I've been using for many years. So there's no reason. I don't see any reason to fiddle with those. So we have done and specified the values that Ninja will optimize for us. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit run. And then this might take a while. So remember what we're doing. Four instruments, futures contracts. It's so one asset class, right? Futures indexes. Um, time frame between five and 30 minutes. So it's very intraday and two and a half years of data roughly. So that's potentially hundreds or even thousands of trades. And Ninja will run this test. This test will run a while. Now, this, our program, BT, BTX, are lightning fast. So it will take probably a few minutes. I don't know, four, five, 10 minutes. Let's see. But it will not take a weekend. So here's already a tremendous uh, efficiency gain if you use our product to run tests like this. But enough talking. Let's do the test. And I'm not going to stop the tape because I want you to see what's happening. So first of all, there are 648 combinations that Ninja will test. And uh, let's see how long it takes. And what results we're getting. In the meantime, I'm just repeating myself. Whatever results we're getting is not a proof. Of course, we're happy if we see something which is uh, promising, but it's not a proof of anything. What we're doing is gathering evidence to support a claim. And also what I want to emphasize is that the edge verification process consists of several steps, none of which can be skipped. The first one is backtesting. The second one is a certain degree of optimization. And there's a third step, definitely a walk forward anal analysis, which uh, we're going to do at probably some later time. Okay, so right now we're in the optimization phase and we're moving towards verifying or gathering evidence to support the claim that it makes sense to run this program on the markets. Probably stop the tape here. This time is reasonable. You can grab a coffee. But definitely, I do remember the old days when something you ran something like this and it was like three days. By the time you get the results, you forgot what the question was. So this is manageable. Look, eight minutes and it's shrinking. So in a couple of minutes, we'll be done, hopefully. And um, again, we can never know the future. The future is never the same as the past. But as Mark Twain said, it often rhymes. And that could be enough for us to to become interested in deploying a strategy on the market, which is based on crowd behavior and is designed to take advantage of a observed characteristic of crowd behavior that seems to have been with us for decades and decades, if not hundreds of uh, years. You could run similar tests, of course, on other asset classes like treasuries uh, or commodities. Commodities is quite varied, but maybe like precious metals or commodities or energies and uh, definitely currencies. Something is important since we're measuring everything in ATR, as you saw in this test, we could put several instruments in one test. You couldn't do that without the ATR, without our program, because you can't compare apples with oranges. You can't put uh, you just say 10 ticks, 20 ticks, and then put ZB and NQ in the same test. That would not be meaningful. However, if you measure everything like we do now in ATRs, you can put anything in the test because everything's measured in something which is normalized. So one ATR is one ATR and anything and is a valid measurement of volatility on a given instrument. All right, there's five minutes left. 365 iterations have already been done, and it's just a few more minutes left. At least I had some time to talk a little bit about uh, how I think about this, and, and also just to indicate that this is not such a simple endeavor, although it seems simple, just a few clicks, but actually the real job 
starts when we start to deal with interpreting the data and uh, drawing some potential conclusions. But we're going to get to that as soon as we have the data. All right, so here we are, a few seconds left. All right, so I think we're done. Here we go. All right, so here we go, the four instruments and the combined results. So just some rough ideas here first to start with. You can spend a lot of time exploring these various metrics. I'm not gonna go into that, that would take an hour. And uh, Ninja has very good documentation on all what these numbers mean. So please go in deeper and explore the data that you were given. Now, in this video, I'm just going to just uh, say a few words about what I'm looking at here. So first of all, performance is something I'm very interested in first. And I see that first, as always, as last time I mentioned, I'm looking at values larger than 1.0. And well, good news, all four, even the combined results, are firmly above 1.0. So that's good. Second, I'm looking at the total number of trades. 9,000 trades, almost 10,000, and 2, 3,000, 1,700. So there's enough. These are, this is a large number of trades, which means the sample size is large enough so that we can draw some conclusions from it statistically. If I just had like 20 trades or something, 50 trades, I wouldn't. That's not really meaningful. And then I also look at percentage profitable. Now, remember, in the edge, that's just one side of the scale because the other side is the win-loss ratio. So many traders put too much emphasis on this. But it does matter, of course, and it's good to see that we are firmly, well, the why I'm not really, but we are, the others are convincingly about 50%, and NQ shines with 60%. Now, again, we just tested for two years, two and a half years, so there's no guarantee that NQ will be doing the same thing in the next two years also. So we have to be careful with drawing conclusions. But again, this is good. It looks good so far. Now, what else do we see? Okay, well, let's do, let's look at the equity curves, okay? So I'm looking at the NQ equity curve. Look at this. So we started in January, 2020. Well, I can't imagine a better looking equity curve or something that is more convincing or inviting but again, we have to be careful because the future could be different. Good start. If you want, you can look at each trade individually. You can look at the chart and look at the chart and look at each trade individually if you want. I'm not going to go into that. And you, you can look at the other instruments, let's say the RTY. And there's no guarantee, although there's obviously correlation between these instruments, there's no guarantee they will look the same. RTY happens to look the same, but look at this. At first, there's a little drawdown. Uh, not much, but maybe a couple of thousand, I don't know. Not much, but this equity curves curve also looks good. Let's look at the ES equity curve. I'm going to show you all, all four. Okay, now here's a different animal. Look at this. So we ran this on two and a half years, and here's this is a trader's life, you see? Obviously, there is something in this strategy that we could use, but still, what was it? More than a year, it was rather flat. And there was one period here when we were down more than $10,000 in the red, underwater. Imagine yourself or myself in this situation, who would be happy? I mean, we would start to have doubts. Maybe I should stop running this. So, but this is just part of life. And if you look at the professionals, there are years, not every year is stellar. And uh, also surprising to see that the market regime has probably changed here. It would be interesting to look at the chart. What happened here? Uh, what, when was it? 2021, October? Started to trend probably the ES in such a way that we suddenly, all the advantages, all the robustness and the strength of our strategy came out. But I also want to add one more thing. Right, for a very, very, very long time, we were flat, but we didn't really break down. We were able to recover. There was a drawdown, but there was no disaster. 
and we did come back. And I also want to look at the YM. That's also a different story, very interesting. Dramatic run up here in the first period, and then the rest of it is, okay, well, not bad, but uh, kind of flat compared to the first period. So that happens too. So quite interesting, you see, and I wasn't preparing this, but it's good because now it shows you that this is not so easy and not so obvious. Yes, there's correlation between these instruments, but they're also different. We all remember that sideways period on the NQ, on the RTY, but interestingly, probably it was here in the middle somewhere. On the equity curve, it would probably show where we had rather these advantageous conditions because that's when this is a trend trading strategy. So in, when there's a trend, we shine. Other times, what we want is not to lose too much money. That's the robustness. You see, keep the money we made, not much drawdown. And when there's another trending period, then shine again. And that's what you're looking for. And in that respect, even the ES is, well, I wouldn't say it's excellent, but at least we did come back and we didn't suffer a huge permanent loss. All right. Now, enough said about that. Now, one thing you can do or we can do in a situation like this, and this is why I uh, chose a basket of instruments, is to, by running this same strategy on all four instruments, you kind of even out the good and the bad. You see, you still enjoy the advantages of the good stellar performances like the NQ. Let me just put it back on the NQ. And so, for example, this one. Because in advance, you may not know, of course, we will never know in the next two years which will be the best. It's easy to see, okay, the NQ is the best. No, the NQ was the best in the past two years. And the ES was weaker. That could be the other way, way around next time. So one way of evening out the, or perhaps distributing a risk a little better is to run the strategy on all four instruments. All right? So... Anyway, even if you combine the, the four of them, I think the results are not bad. Now, next thing you may want to look at, since we're optimizing, and I'm going to stop here with this last point, is let's just look at the NQ. So remember the three questions we asked. We asked NinjaTrader, between 5 and 30 minutes, in 5-minute increments, what's the best time frame to run this strategy on? The answer is 15. 15 minute time frame. So this is the 15 minute chart because that's what gave us the best results. And I was interesting and important to note, we need to specify what we run it for. Give me a second. Maximum profit factor. So I'm not, I haven't, I didn't optimize this for maximum profit, not monetary dollar value. But I'm, I, I ran the test for maximum profit factor. But of course, you see, there's several, many, many other. Minimum drawdown, for example. You want to sleep better? Maybe say, okay, I don't care how steep is the equity curve. What I want is just to sleep well. So you might be looking for minimum drawdown. And make your decisions based on the result of that test. In this particular test, I just ran it on profit factor for now and then feel free to explore further. Again, 15 minutes gave us best results. I'm just looking at the NQ now. And I'm looking at three ATR target. You see the, the number in the bracket is the answer to the question. The three ATR target for the first contract worked best. Good for us. All right. And then the trailing stop, trigger level, the best result we got when we started trailing when we were 1 ATR in profit. And we started trailing from a distance of 1 ATR. That's a, that's a pretty tight stop, trailing stop to start with. But this is what this test result tells us. And the, there were no other questions, right? Were there? No. Okay, so I hope this little presentation, perhaps it was a bit too lengthy, but it should give you a little bit of inspiration and incentive to start doing your own work. This is a fantastic program. 
well built, lightning fast, that five, 10 minute test for something like this, believe me, it is fast. You should have been around when this kind of thing took three days. I remember those days. Now it's fast. You can do your edge verification process before you start deploying your funds on the market. Good luck and hopefully we'll be back with further videos and continue to explore the possibilities. So, so much about the optimization process, or at least the initial stages of it in NinjaTrader 8.1, and we'll talk later. Thank you very much and mindful trading.